Hey guys, and welcome back to Wonder Walkers. Today's video is going to be 10 things we have learned about owning a Whippet. So late last year in October, we got our first Whippet, Suki, at eight weeks old, and she was the light of our lives for the last year, and also the terror of our lives. <laughs> Just kidding. She is now 14 months old, so we wanted to talk a little bit about what our experience has been with having a Whippet for the first time. Um, as we've mentioned in previous videos, this was my first time having a puppy ever, because I was never allowed a dog when I was younger. But Dan had had other breeds of dogs when he was growing up, a lot of staffies and things like that, wasn't it? So we wanted to talk a little bit about Whippets today because I know there's a lot of people out there that are interested in learning more about them and whether they are maybe the right breed of pet for them. So before we got our Whippet, uh, we did a lot of research to find out the perfect dog for us and we came across the Whippet and from what we've read, it's pretty pretty good breed for our lifestyle and our personalities. It suits us very well. But there are some things that we learned along the way and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're not going to generalize too much though, so just keeping that in mind as a disclaimer, uh, we know that all dog breeds are not exactly the same as to what their traits are meant to be or anything like that, and every dog is different, but I think we've learned a few things that we didn't expect with having a Whippet, and we want to talk about those as well today. So every dog loves to just zoom around, and <laughs> that's why they call them zoomies, but... A Whippet Zoomie is just something out of this world, <laughs> I, something I've never seen before. It's just like snap of the fingers and the dog is just going absolutely nuts. Like, <laughs> like we they can't can be... <laughs> handle it. It's just the funniest thing I've ever seen. They can be seriously curled up on a bed sleeping one minute and the next like they've snapped and they are like... I, it's like nef nothing I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure... The first time my brother saw Suki zooming around the living room, he was like crying in laughter, like, and he was just like, "It's making me laugh." Like, think about <laughs> I know. It. And just like her her facial expressions too is is like the funniest thing. Like, she automatically just suddenly has no ears. She's like full aerodynamic. Like, you can just see they were built for speed. <laughs> <laughs> Should have bought that last because I can't do the rest of the video now. <laughs> oh, so funny. The second thing we want to talk about is Suki sleeps a lot and she will sleep for six or seven hours on and off after she's done her zoomies. But even if she hasn't done her zoomies, she just sleeps. She just wants to yeah. sleep. She just wants to snuggle up in the lounge or on the computer chair or on the bed or on the floor somewhere or on her own bed or on our bed. Just anywhere she can find a comfy spot, she will just lay down and have a sleep. Keeping in mind that she still needs, she still has that burst of energy each day. Uh, but there, there are times where I'll just be editing at my computer all day or doing things on my computer and she will just like sleep in the chair next to me and just... She's, I don't know, they have like a very good ability to sleep for very long periods of the day, which is great for us because it does allow us to get work done. Yep. Admittedly, she didn't have that initially when she was a very young puppy. She had a lot of puppy energy for yep. probably the first six months or so, six to 12 months. And then she started to kind of like get a bit quieter throughout the day, get a bit more chill, which was great. The third thing we found out is that they can be very food driven and Suki is so food driven. Oh my god. It's actually to the point where it's almost annoying at times. And we were told that they weren't, like that they were very picky. And I feel like she's she's sometimes picky with like kibble. Like she doesn't always like eat it as immediately like as it's put down in front of her. She might kind of pick at it throughout yep. the day. But if it is literally anything else, <laughs> like chicken, um, cheese. treats, cheese, banana, like fruits, vegetables, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's out, she wants it. Yep. Like... And it's very annoying at times, especially if you're trying to eat because it's all she wants. It's like her attention span for, you know, birds and things like that. And her prey drive was like switched to food somewhere along the way. And that's kind of like what she focuses on. I feel like that's more important to her sometimes than, than actually chasing prey or anything yeah. like that. Uh, but yeah, we found that they're very food driven, even though we sort of expected them not to be. So that's kind of something to look out for if you do end up getting a whippet. <laughs> We've also found that she's just great company to be around she's just 
so much fun to be around and when she's sleeping she's super cute and she just wants to snuggle up to us. Yeah, if we're sitting on the lounge watching TV she'll snug up as close as she can get and when we go to bed at night we have to sometimes force her to go into her own <laughs> bed because she wants to come and snuggle yeah. and keep us company and she's keep warm. very uh very affectionate for a dog like I, I know a lot of dogs are affectionate out there some not so much but i think suki is just like she just loves being around her humans like yeah. there's nothing better really than that for her um and sometimes that can kind of translate into neediness at times which is sometimes difficult to deal with like i think we've learned to uh crate train her and to give her a lot of time away from us as well as much as we can because we need her to be that independent dog too and not sort of suffer from anxiety and things like that. Um, but she is just so great. When she wants to snuggle, there's like, yeah, nothing else that she wants to do in this world. And that brings us on to our next point, which is that we understand why some people call whippets Velcro dogs because Definitely. they literally just don't want to leave your side. They're always next to you. If you leave the room, she'll follow. If you go to um, the other side of the lounge or if you move to a different lounge, she'll follow so she can snug you there. Uh, she just wants to be around us like 24 seven. The and amount of times like I've nearly tripped on her because she is, and she's so quiet too. Yeah. They're just so light footed. You don't always know that they're there. So you have to be very careful and yeah. always look around and look at your feet because yeah, I've nearly tripped on her like 800 times, just nearly fallen straight on her. Um, but yeah, they're definitely Velcro dogs. Like, if you get up off a seat, then she's going to follow you. Like, yeah. there's just no question about it. Sometimes we forget that Suki is a dog. Some of her personality traits are more closely related to a cat. And other times, she's a dog. It just, like, mixes and matches. And like, other she's... times, I don't even know what she is. Yeah. She's just, like, this strange creature. <laughs> I've never met um, an, another dog like Suki in the sense that sometimes you just don't you don't associate her with just being a normal dog, mm. I think. Um, I've had dogs all my life and they have been completely different to what Suki's personality yeah. is like. And I think it does come down to the type of breed because I've had similar dogs and other different types of dogs and nothing is none of those have been anything like Suki. Which actually brings us to our next point, and they're just, like, they're just hilarious. Like, they're hilarious to hang around, to be around. Mm -hmm. Like, they have such distinct personalities, I think, and, like, they're just so funny. Like, when you're taking photos of them, they're just, they're like these awkward dogs, yeah. and I love it. I love it, you know? I mean, what's the point of having a dog if you can't laugh at your dog sometimes, you know? Some of the positions she sleeps in, some of the faces yeah. she makes, the way her ears go back, yeah. the way she kind of runs and jumps and runs around the, the lounge room, just the way she uh, digs, like the way she pees, like her everything attitude. she does oh, is just man. funny. And yeah. even when she's doing something naughty, sometimes it's really hard to not laugh <sighs> at what she's doing. You're trying to be firm and like train her, but there's just times where you can't help but laugh at her. And sometimes she is being like semi-destructive in these in these moments too and you're just like oh my god please stop but it's just so funny uh at times especially when she's like running around zooming around the house so yeah they're just funny dogs to be to be around and and really good if you like to have a laugh every now and then one thing that we did read about before we got the whip it was that they are super clean and we can definitely vouch for that she's so clean she doesn't have that really bad dog odor it doesn't matter how long in between baths even when she gets muddy or dirt all over her like she it somehow just disappears she doesn't have that much fur coming off her each day her bed doesn't smell like she's just she's just really clean she doesn't smell or look dirty ever i mean she smells like a little bit but like you really have to get your nose right into mm. like everything to actually smell the scent and it's not that bad even kind of when it's at its worst. So we do find that she is pretty low maintenance in that way, especially with just, just general grooming. Um, if anything, we sort of have to brush her teeth maybe a little bit more than maybe some other dogs. But uh, I know that whippets and sighthounds are sometimes prone to teeth issues. But other than that, she's a really super low maintenance clean dog, which is great for us. And so part of their attitude too that they have, and I feel like this is pretty common with Whippets from what I've heard since having Suki, is that they always want to know what's in it for them, especially when you're training them. They have this kind of defiance and they know, like if you've got a treat there, then they'll do what you want them to do. But if you don't, then it's going to make things 
800 times harder a lot of the time to train them and to get them to do what you want them to do. So I guess in a sense with Suki, it is nice to have her being food driven because you always know if you've got a little bit of chicken on you or if you've got a treat, then she's going to do what you want her to do and especially good for training uh, purposes. But yeah, it can be very frustrating when you want them to do something and they're not doing it because you don't have a treat in your hand. <laughs> if Suki doesn't get that food or if she knows she do you don't have that food, she is the most stubborn dog in the oh, world. Oh, man. So we have to have treats on us basically 24-7, whether we're going for a walk, whether we're teaching her a new trick, or whether we just want her to sit down in one spot and stay still. If there's a treat in our hand, she will do everything. We do tend to practice a lot with treats first and then slowly bring them out of the mix so she starts to learn when we mm. don't have treats then she should still be doing what we ask yeah. her to do. Uh, but yeah, it does become very difficult at times when you when you need them to do something and they're being very stubborn about it. And the final thing we want to talk about is if they have a warm spot, they're all good. Suki loves sitting in this particular spot in the lounge room on top of the lounge where the sun comes in yep. and the sun floods the room and she'll sit there for a couple of hours. Yeah. If it's not there, it. she'll snug under any blanket that she can get her head under. She'll sit in front of the heater oh, in the winter. the heater is like her favourite spot yeah. ever. As soon as we turn that heater on, she hears it turn on and she's right in front of it. Yeah. And it's funny, she goes through like this little process where she'll get a little bit hot she and then she'll go hot, away. Walks away, and then lays she'll down, come back. <laughs> come back. Lays down, comes back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wherever there's a warm spot, whether it's the sun, the heater, blankets, or even you, if she can snuggle up to you where you're warm, yep. she is good and she will stay there for as long as she wants to until she gets too hot. So we hope you guys learned a little bit more about Whippets today and what Suki is like in particular. Obviously, this doesn't apply to every Whippet out there, but I think it's a few more traits that we didn't really know about maybe beforehand. And then since having a dog, since having a Whippet in particular, we've kind of learned as we've gone along the way and that some of these things do apply to Whippets as well. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. So if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you see all of our videos coming up in future. If you'd like like to hear or see any more Whippet related videos in the future let us know in the comments and we can definitely make more of them because we enjoy making them and Suki is a part of our life and we want her to be involved in this channel as much as possible as well so if you do want to see more let us know and we'll make them for you but until next time thanks again for watching see you in the next video bye